The galactic center is located at 26 degrees Sagittarius. And we are there now, now. In the heart of consciousness, beyond the realm of space and time, the cosmic power of transformation is upon us here in the galactic center. It's a mystical adventure and a better way to live. Finding harmony and balance in a journey to the light that lies within. So let the psychic cruise begin. your mind, unwind the time. Welcome to the Galactic Center. Center. You've heard about the movie All the President's Men. Well, lately the news is about All the President's Women. And there is an astrological explanation for this. This is astrologer Jenny Lynch, and he, she's here to tell us about how this is occurring and why and throughout history there is a whole history of infidelity in the horoscope for the presidents. Right. Well, um, you know, I just read this book called The Sex Lives of the Presidents and uh, it was really revealing and then of course I had to go cast all their horoscopes and see why. Why did they do the things they did? Well, Bill Clinton, as you all know, we know about his sex life a little bit more than we want to know even. He has that Venus-Mars straddling the ascendant in the sign of Libra. This is a people person. Neptune's in on the picture. This is somebody who is very erotic, okay? I think the problem is that all of this is right on the ascendant, and this is how others see you as a very sexually erotic person. Everybody who has ever met him that I talked to said he was amazing. Just well, also that Libra, right Libra ascendant being very. the social plan, uh, mm -hmm. social sign, and of course, very charismatic. Yes, I think I think this is true for him, and I think that that why we know about his love life so much is because these two planets of love making are right on the ascendant. Now his moon is a very hungry moon. He's a Leo. Don't forget, he's already charismatic, center of attention. Right? The moon is hungry in the sign of Taurus, where it's exalted, and it's in the house of sex. Wherever our moon is, this is what we need. So he needs plenty of sex, but it's an afflicted moon. And so when you have afflictions coming from your house of secrets here, <laughs> they house get of, known. House of secrets out in the open. Right. JFK, well, we didn't know as much about his sex life as we do about Clinton's until after he died. Maybe right. because the ruler of his horoscope is in the house of death. Usually you become more famous after you die when that's the also, case. Also here again, the Libra ascendant. Very Both charming. presidents, very charming. And he is a Gemini, and his Venus is in Gemini, usually a sign that you would like more than one lover. Fickle, fickle <laughs> that sign of Gemini over and here. The Mars in, in a very sensual sign of Taurus. And it sits with Jupiter and with Mercury. And so what can happen here is it can bring too much excess. Mm. And it's all in the house of sex, the house of secrets. And uh, I think another thing is we have so many letters that he's written about sex, my lord. That's the Mercury. The Mercury-Jupiter conjunction. Yes. Cannot keep his mouth shut, even though he's very <laughs> sensual. He loves to talk about it. He'd probably like to talk in bed. <laughs> Certainly a big focus of his life there, all that stellium in the eighth house. Well, Angie Dickinson yeah. said, best 20 seconds I ever had. Right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, here's somebody else who I think was very sexual, even though we may not realize it. Again, it's LBJ. And um, he said he had more women by accident than JFK ever had on purpose. By accident. Well, that might be his Uranus down here in the fifth house. Right. His, when you do have Uranus in the fifth house, you can change partners very quickly. His Uranus mm -hmm. happens to be opposed his Venus. This is a sign of somebody with tremendous charisma, great attraction ability. Sharon Stone has it, for example. And Warren Beatty has the conjunction. He also has a Venus-Neptune conjunction, which makes him incredibly romantic and very dreamy. And the Mars is sitting here on the Ascendant, so he comes off big guns. In fact, he used to have a nickname for himself down there. <laughs> <laughs> he called himself Jumbo. Jumbo, <laughs> yeah. okay. Maybe that's that Jupiter, Mars, and the Ascendant. Well, here again now we find uh, all of these planets on his, around his Ascendant, 
which not only makes uh, makes him sexy, but also powerful. Very a powerful, powerful, attracting great good fortune. In mm -hmm. fact, a Lady Bird Johnson, when they asked her about her husband's infidelity, she said, my husband loves people. Half of the people happen to be women. Do you think I can <laughs> keep him away from half of the people? And so she was very... Uh, very smart woman, I think. <laughs> I tried to keep him away from but people. But definitely either. not easy. No, not okay. him. None of these guys. Would I want any of these guys? No, thank you. I pass. <laughs> as much. powerful as they are, they're still, oh, they have their problems. Okay. Well, um, okay, Jay, uh, we brought FDR. up FDR. Why? Because he used to be a womanizer, too. He had a sun and Venus sitting together in the sign of Aquarius. When you have Venus in Aquarius, it gives you a special sparkle, a pizzazz, because it's ruled by the planet Uranus. Again, in the fifth house of right. relationships. And Uranus mm -hmm. is on the ascendant, too, so he's going to do things his own way. Mm -hmm. And um, it's interesting to note that he had the Venus-Saturn square. Venus squaring Saturn means that you will stay in a marriage even long after you should leave it because you feel that it's work. So he stayed with Eleanor. She mm -hmm. got fed up with him uh, halfway through and uh, decided to become a lesbian and lived with a lesbian. No, I'm not no kidding. No kidding. Here. I did not know this. Yes, no. She <laughs> lived with a woman named Hitchcock who this was is a news writer. to me. And Hitchcock weighed 200 pounds, smoked cigars, and drank bourbon and wrote so many beautiful articles about Eleanor Roosevelt and made her the famous first lady. Totally did a public relations campaign for her. And later, uh, Eleanor picked up a young boy. And she had uh, she had a lot of fun. She, she got back at him. So she, <laughs> she was a pretty active woman in her own right. Very independent. Mm -hmm. And of course, FDR picked up polio, and he was you know reconciled to a wheelchair. But he still had Miss Lucy with him till the end. And his powerful planets again? Well, he's his got that Mars right Mars up on the right mid-heaven. Mid that's, 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 that's one of them right there. That's always terrific for someone who is ambitious and very successful in their career, in that fact, Mars on the midheaven. Ike Eisenhower had it on the midheaven in Capricorn. And, mm -hmm. you know, when you have Mars on the midheaven, you are known for a career in which you have power, which mm -hmm. could be a military career. And so mm -hmm. they're both really good I know really a stockbroker who has Mars on the midheaven. Yes, very do. successful. Yes, we do. <laughs> I bring up Jimmy Carter's mm -hmm. horoscope for a reason. I just picked out a few of these guys that I thought had interesting horoscopes, although they all do. He's Mr. Libra Rising, Mr. Slick, a too. A lot of these presidents have mm -hmm. Libra Rising. They're very popular with the public. He's a little bit more serious. He has Saturn on the Ascendant. Mm -hmm. And he's a Libra himself. But he has Venus in Leo, and it sits with Neptune. So he is, very, like LBJ, he's very romantic. He's very spiritually uplifting to others. But look at this. The only president reported not to have had sex uh, you know, with anyone but his wife while in office. And he has the Mars-Venus opposition. This is probably the lustiest aspect you can have. JFK Jr. has it. Mm -hmm. Jimmy Carter had it. And so what we see here is somebody who really chose to channel up this energy into up the to, higher. Up to the higher chakras. Yeah. Perhaps his Saturn right here on his ascendant gave him a little bit more self-discipline. I think Could so. Be. I yes. would think so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So... He channeled it. Who do we have here? James Buchanan. Well, maybe you know him, maybe you don't know him, but he was our president, our only gay president, really. <laughs> he was a bachelor. <laughs> no, news to me also. He Didn't never married. One. He never married. And he, his lover was Vice President King. <laughs> so <laughs> That's convenient. <laughs> they, they had a very uh, powerful relationship together. But it's interesting because, you know, Uranus on the ascendant. This means I'm going to do things my own way right mm -hmm. off the bat. Mm -hmm. There's something unusual. He doesn't have the typical... Uh, aspects for a homosexual or a bisexual man. Those are usually uh, strong Uranus squares. Um, well, he has it square the sun. It's true he has that, but usually to the Venus we can see. But uh, he does, in fact, he was, in fact, our first gay president. And here again, the stellium up here, the sun on the midheaven. Right, yes. very powerful Power. there. This, so that shows, natural born uh, leader. again, a natural born leader. So now we go from a homosexual president to, get this one, Jenny tells us Lincoln was a bisexual president. Well, according to history books, uh, some of them think he was a homosexual president, but obviously he was married to Mary, and uh, bisexual is my call on this. Okay, he was an Aquarius, and of course they love everybody, right? <laughs> Just like LBJ. Uh -huh. And um, his Venus was in Aries, a very passionate sign to mm -hmm. have, and his Mars was in Libra, and this is a people person, okay? Again, somebody who likes to engage with others. Uh, one thing that interests me a lot is that his Venus was trying to Saturn and trying to Neptune. This is usually a sign of somebody who can have a long-term relationship and actually find their soulmate here on the Earth plane. So he was very romantic. Uh, they said many, many women uh, pressed themselves upon him, and he rejected them. He did have some resistance. Um, but what, what struck me is that he first started dating his wife when they were young, and they broke up and didn't see each other for about 10 years. 
Then he wrote a political satire and he signed it Aunt Rebecca. She read it in a magazine and she wrote a second political satire in answer to that and signed it Aunt Rebecca. And later they found out that they had both been writing the same using the same pen name and that's what brought them together again so finding this feeling of finding your soulmate here on the earth plane oh, however she did torment him quite quite a bit <laughs> and led him to the bisexuality I guess well no he was actually living with a man before in between the first time he dated her and then when he finally married her okay and also there again the sun right on the ascendant which uh, makes him a powerful man and also in the public. Also look at this Neptune on the Midheaven. This is somebody who is very inspired to uplift others, a very, very spiritual, spiritual person. Yes. And if Saturn and Sagittarius would say the same thing. Mm -hmm. I think the moon Mars uh, represents Mary here. Where is the, oh yeah, here's Mars and the moon in a square formation. That means the woman could be bitchy, and bitch she did. Okay, <laughs> but he did do some excellent work on the planet. Oh sure, Definitely. we loved him, yeah. Okay, and next we have Warren Harding. Somebody else. I understand you have a really interesting story for us here. Yeah, somebody else who had a bitchy wife is what I meant to say about this because, well, first of all, let me just tell you the story. His wife used an astrologer when he was in the White House, and he listened to everything that was told to him, and that's how he made his decisions. So not only did Ben Franklin and Thomas Jefferson conspire to set up the Declaration of, of Independence using astrology, but this guy is one of the first to practice it in the White House as well. Now, uh, he was very devoted to his wife uh, in the beginning, and of course he strayed and he fell in love with a very young girl. She was 15 years old when she first met him, and uh, later they became lovers and she became impregnated by him. When the wife hired a private detective to see if this was true or not, um, he threw the private detective in jail when he brought the evidence. He <laughs> said, see, that's You it. see what power can do? <laughs> yeah, in the olden days. Yes. Now you can't save you anymore. But um, what happened is that his wife got so angry, told him, I don't want you to see that woman anymore, and he continued to see her. And then, very weirdly enough, he died of food poisoning on the campaign trail. And mm -hmm. so the detective got out of jail and wrote a bestseller book on how she murdered the president and some of his friends. For the infidelity. <laughs> yes. Yes. So it's shown here by this bitchy, exalted moon in the exalted degree of three degrees Taurus, opposed to the Saturn in the eighth house of death, which is the ruler of the horoscope. The old again, ruler. Again, the moon representing the woman in a man's life. Right. Always. And mm -hmm. the moon is also opposed to Mars mm -hmm. and also opposed to the sun, so he's born on a full moon. But this is a very interesting horoscope here. Again, in the eighth house right, up here, and all of these planets, the stellium and his power planets, sun sitting with Mars and uh, Mercury. Right. And Saturn. And Scorpio. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In the house of death. And mm -hmm. again, we see people that become even more famous after they leave the planet uh, when they have their ruler in the house of death, like Princess Di. Hey, and look at the Venus-Neptune opposition here. Mm -hmm. uh, I, he was so um, idealistic about love. People that have a Venus-Neptune square or opposition were so romantic. We're not realistic enough to really maintain a good relationship. That's why we have to have our, our things on the side or in our head. <laughs> <laughs> Somewhere. Well, thanks, Jen. That was terrific. So there's your history lesson for the day and a little bit of Astrology 101.